Hey everyone. Now in the last video, I was setting up a switch at my friend's place and I briefly mentioned how I was doing some natting to get to his cameras on the other side of his NVR. Now I didn't think much of it for that video because that's not what the video was about, but there's been some interest and some questions on how and why I did that. So in this video, I'll take you through what I did and obviously why I did that. Okay, what I'm gonna do is draw this and talk you through it as I draw it rather than just put a big complete diagram on the screen. So I'll start with my network which is 192.168.10.0 slash 24. So there it is there, my little home network. Now that goes through a router, so I've got a router here, and it goes out to the internet. So internet, boom, 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 boom. Now over at old mate's place, let's call it Tim, He's got a network that is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. Okay, so that's his home network. And he's also got his router, which also connects to the internet. Now on both of our routers, we've got WireGuard. So we have a, a WireGuard interface, which joins us obviously through the, the net, but you know, it's its own app interface on the router. So I've got my LAN side, the WAN side, and the WireGuard VPN. And he's got the same sort of thing over here. Now as that stands, anything in my network can get to anything in his, and his can get to mine just on these simple networks here. But on his side, I'll take it a bit further and draw the switch. So he has a switch in there. Okay. So I can plug all this shit in there. Now one of the things he's got hanging off that switch is his NVR, his recording system for his cameras. Okay. And it has its uplink interface here, so it can get out to the world, uplink. But from this network perspective, it's just a normal device. So this NVR's address is 192.168.1.251. So it's just a host of his network here. There's nothing special so far. Now from my network over here, I can ping that, 192.168.1.251. And that's, that's pretty standard. It's just a host on his network, and I can ping it. Now this NVR is basically a router and switch in itself. So this would be like its WAN connection if you like, and it's got a LAN connection, if you want to call it that, for his cameras. So he then has cameras. Okay, there's a bunch of them, but I'll just draw one. But they're a different addressing scheme. So they're 10.1.1.0. I think they're slash 24 as well. So that's a different network. Now that means that I can't get to that directly from here. So my desk, top the machine I'm on right now is 192.168.10.3 so when I ping something on his network like this address over here I go ping 192.168.1.251 it just goes to my default gateway which is my router and in here my router says ah that one's down wireguard so it sends it down wireguard gets to his router and it goes okay it's on the land side and it sends it through to this address here that's what you just saw me pinging. However, that's the WAN side of the NVR zone router. So I can't ping 1011, one of his cameras is dot .65. So I'll just draw his camera, 10.1.1.65, right? That's one of his cameras of his camera network. So the issue is, if I wanted to ping that address here, from here, I send it up here and it goes, as, as usual, to the router. And I've told my router that the 10110 network is down the other end of WireGuard. So it'll send it down the WireGuard to Tim's place as well. It'll get to his router. But the thing is that network, this 10110 network, is not part of this router. So it wouldn't be able to get there. It would just send it out. Its default route was internet, but it wouldn't because it was a private address. But you get the idea. So that wouldn't actually get there. So I'll show you what we did. So instead of plugging the cameras into the NVR, what I did instead was plug them into the switch and also plug this side of the NVR into the switch as well. So I didn't have this one here. And what I've done here is put another VLAN on the switch. So I've got VLAN 2. So that's a separate part of the switch. So I've got eight ports on that switch set up to be the cameras. Oops, cameras. And that's that. So going up to the router, what I've also done is I've made a VLAN 2 interface on the router. I've tagged it. So I've got untagged VLAN 1, just the normal untagged network, but now I've got a tagged VLAN 2. 
and I've got that coming down into the switch as well. So this port that plugs into the switch now has tagged VLAN 2. And what I've done on the router, on this VLAN interface here, I've given it an address, I forget what I gave it, 10.1. something. Okay, just checked, I gave it 10.1.1.99. Okay, that's his interface there, but I don't have a DHCP server because the NVR is the DHCP server for that camera network. But what that means is I can send stuff to it. So now what happens? If I send a ping from 192.168.10.3 to one of his cameras, 10.1.1.65, it'll go up here, it'll go to WireGuard, it'll go down the tunnel, it'll go there. The router says, oh yeah, I'm part of that network, so it'll just send it out VLAN 2, it'll go down VLAN 2, Go to the camera network, beautiful, it'll get there. Now for the reply address, these cameras here have a default gateway of this interface here. I didn't write that down. So in the NVR, there's 10.1.1.1, which is this interface right there. Now the return traffic is going to try and go from this camera through its NVR because that's their default gateway but the NVR is not letting it back through. So it's not happy that an echo reply is coming from the camera going through here for something it never saw a request to. So it's not going back up the link here. So I had to get around that. So I'll just quickly show you, if I try to ping 101165, I've turned the NAT rules off, you'll see it doesn't get through. Now on Tim's router, what you'll see if I do a TCP dump of that VLAN 2 interface, you'll see the request come in, but no replies coming back on VLAN 2 because as I said, it'll be going the default gateway of the NVR. And the problem is, if I look at the LAN side of his router, I don't see the return get there. So that tells me that it's making it all the way to his camera, but the camera is sending it back to the NVR, but the NVR is not even putting it back to the router, which the router might get upset with anyway, because it's a different interface that it came in on. But either way, that's what I wanted to get around. So the way I did that was on his router, I went down the firewall and NAT, and then outbound, so outbound from the router. And initially it's over here on automatic, but I just made it a hybrid one so I can do stuff. And here's the rule that I added. Now I just disabled it for that demo, so I'll re-enable it. Okay, so what this says is if the source is 192.168.10.0.24, which is my network here, and it's going out to the camera's interface, which is VLAN 2, that's what I called it, then NAT it with the source address being the camera's address, which is the VLAN 2 interface of this firewall here. So from the camera's perspective, if I go back to my diagram, they'll see the packet coming from this interface on the router here, rather than the desktop one. So you remember before, it showed the source address as 192.168.10.3. So I'll start the ping to his camera, and you can see it's responding. And I'll do a packet capture on his VLAN 2 interface. Okay, so there it is, I'll just stop that. Stop them both, because they're annoying me. What you can see this time is the source address is his router. So what will happen this time, other than it simply responding, is when this desktop sends the ping out, it goes all the way up to the router unchanged, but then the router changes it and makes it the source address. That's where it's doing the NAT. And because of that, it'll go down VLAN 2, and like it would before VLAN 2, but it's actually got the VLAN 2 addressing scheme. So the cameras see that, and they see the source address as 10.1.1.99. And what they do is you go, ah, oh, okay, no need to use the router, just send the reply straight out. It goes back out onto his network for VLAN 2, and then the router sees that return and sends the return back to me. So that is why I did the, the um, outbound NAT, and that's how I can get to the cameras from my network. Okay, so that's a bit of a deeper look at the uh, natting that I did on the firewall so I could access those cameras. So that'll do for now. Till next time, take it easy.